Lecture 8, Interpreting Data, Graphs and Charts, Part 2. So, so far we have had a look at a number of different charts and graphs that we use for presenting data. We've had a look at pie charts, bar charts and histograms and line graphs as well. We're now going to have a look at a few more that are sometimes useful to represent certain different types of data. And we alluded to a few of them, um, particularly around box plots um, and stem leaf diagrams. We had we alluded to box plots in one of our previous lectures when we were having a look at calculating um, our range. So if we think back to um, our lecture number five in this series of lectures, in a series of lectures, we understood that the range was particularly useful when having a look at scale data, which is interval or ratio data. A box plot is actually the graphical representation of that calculation. So it's a graphical representation of our calculation of our range and our interquartile range and so on and so forth. It shows the um, upper and lower ends of the data so it's really especially helpful when we are trying to understand whether distribution is skewed and whether there are outliers in our data set as well. It's also particularly useful when we're having to have a look at a very large number of observations that otherwise when we just sort of have a look at on, on, on paper, just looking at those raw values, it's a little bit more difficult to actually have a look at. Putting them into something that's more visual helps us to see that a little bit more clearly. So what does a box plot actually look like? This example we have here is what we mean when we mean a box plot. And what we'll see here, what we see here is that this box plot shows our range. So we have our minimum value of four years. So in this case we're looking at the age of our respondents of a particular survey, of a hypothetical survey. And we can see here that we have our minimum age range of a minimum age of four years and a maximum age of 47 years. So we plot both our minimum and we plot our maximum. The interquartile range is from 18.5 to 36.5 and that is our first quartile, so Q1, our Q1 value, and our 36.5 is our Q3 value and that is our interquartile range. Our median is our value when we put all of our data together in some form of order and pick what our middle value is. Our median value is 24. So we can see here that plots basically our range from our minimum to our maximum. We see our interquartile range from Q1 to Q3 and we have a look at our median value which is 24 years old. What is actually useful to note at this stage is that the whiskers Okay, which are the two, the two uh, straight lines? Okay, they're set in software packages to actually have a cutoff at one and a half box lengths from the upper and lower quartile as a mean of identifying our outliers and extreme values. So it's a useful point to note if you're trying to plot them in a in a, in a computer package. Our second type of of graph that we do sometimes see that we sometimes have a look at to represent and summarise data or what we call stem and leaf plots. Now stem and leaf plots are particularly useful at summarising uh, scale data. They help to show the major feature, the major features of the distribution of that particular data set. And stem and leaf plots really, they, they almost sort of take their, take their starting point from histograms. Okay, they actually are very similar to histogram sets and they show um, both a table and a picture. Of the data. Now stem and leaf plots, as you'll notice from the example that we're going to have a look at in a minute, they do generally tend to work better with smaller data sets. If you have incredibly large data sets, then it can be it can be difficult to plot all those different values and you end up with something that's really a little bit unwieldy. And you'll see what we mean when we have a look at the next slide. So here's an example of what we mean by stem and leaf plot. This, this stem and leaf plot shows our exam scores out of 100, a hypothetical set of exam scores out of 100. And we can see that, what does it show? Well, it shows us that we have one student, so the, the, final, the uh, final row 
in that in that table we can see that one student gained a mark in the 80s and that mark was 82 so we have in our first column we have uh, almost what we call it's like a like the denominator of that value is so everything that is in the 40s represented by 4 everything that's in the 50s the 60s the 70s and the 80s one student gained, gained an 82 so we put the 2 next to the 8 four students um, gained marks in the 70s first one being 72 as you see by the 2 in the second row up from the bottom another one gained a 72 one gained a 74 and one gained, gained a 77 and so on now you'll notice with this we're only working with an n value of 25 so we only have 25 exam scores to plot in this stem and leaf plot it works very well for a smaller number of data. If we had a large number of, 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 of data, if we had a large data set to look at, so say for example we had 200 values to plot in there, it would start making it a little bit more difficult to actually one, fit them all in one stem and leaf plot and two, to actually make any sense of the distribution of data. Because you'll notice that in the, in the uh, row where we have everyone for the 50s, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten students that gained marks in the fifties. If we multiply that up um, to say, for example, two hundred, it would start to. If we multiplied that up, so our n value wasn't twenty-five, our n value was two hundred. Judging from this data set, we'd have a significant um, number of students within that fifties mark, and we wouldn't be able to plot all of those on one single line. And the point of this is that because all the values are plotted on one single line, we can actually start seeing the distribution and the shape of the distribution of this particular data set, which we can see we have a slight skew. OK, so we have a, we have most people within the 50s and 60s. OK, and of those, we have more that are in the 50s that are in the 60s. So if you were to turn that on its head, you'd start seeing the distribution. So they're very useful for being able to see those kinds of things.